Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and now in this video we will be understanding how the discovery of proton took place. But guys, before starting with this topic, it is necessary for you all to know what are cathode rays. And if you don't know that, don't worry, I have made a short video on that. You can find a link in the description box. So coming back to this topic. So in the discharge tube experiment, what we have seen is that we have a negatively charged plate which is known as a cathode and a positively charged plate which is known as a anode. And under a very low pressure and high voltage, there were certain rays emitted by this cathode. This cathode emitted certain rays. These rays were known as cathode rays. And as we all seen that these cathode rays consist of small small particles and these particles are known as electrons. Okay. So this is what the first point says that the cathode rays travel from negatively charged cathode. This is negatively charged cathode to positively charged anode. Okay. So now what Goldstein thought was that if this negatively charged cathode can emit certain negative particles so why not this positively charged anode emit positive particles for so for this he did one experiment he carried out an electrical discharge experiment so what is this electrical discharge experiment you will understand okay so for carrying out the electrical discharge experiment he modified the cathode ray tube. What he did was that he took perforated disc cathode. Now what is perforated disc cathode? Can you see this black color boxes? These black color boxes are nothing but your cathode and between these cathode small small boxes there is a gap. Okay. This is a modification done by Goldstein. And now what he observed was that as we as usual we know that this cathode is going to emit cathode rays. Okay. So this cathode rays are going to be emitted by this cathode. Okay. Now the further on he observed was that there were certain rays emitted in opposite direction of cathode rays. Cathode rays travel from cathode to anode that is from left to right. But Goldstein observed that there are certain rays which are emitted from right to left. Can you see these rays which are traveling from right to left? These rays pass through the holes of perforated cathode in the form of canals. Can you see this perforated cathode? So these rays travel through these gaps in the form of canals. And therefore, these rays were named as canal rays or the anode rays. Moving ahead, let's understand what are the properties of these anode rays. What are means the special properties of these anode rays? Okay. So the first property is that they travel in a straight line in direction opposite to cathode rays. We have already seen that the anode rays travel in opposite direction to the cathode rays. Second property is that in presence of electric field, they deflect towards the negative plate, which means that if you apply a negative, uh, sorry, if you apply a, a electric field to this anode rays, what happens is that these anode rays get attracted towards the negative plate. Now, as we all know that opposite charges attract each other. Positive charge will attract a negative charge. Since these anode rays are getting attracted towards a negative charge, therefore, this carry a positive charge. It was declared that the anode rays carry a positive charge. Until and unless it carries a positive charge, it won't get attracted towards a negatively charged plate. Therefore, it was put that, that the cathode rays are positively charged. Further on, they produce a fluorescence when incident on zinc sulfate screen. See, after they travel through these gaps, we have a zinc sulfate screen kept over here. So when they hit those zinc sulfate screen, 
they will produce fluorescence now what is fluorescence fluorescence is a kind of a light see i have written a glow over here so when they strike the zinc sulfate screen they will produce a glow over here okay this is the third property the fourth property is that they are also deflected by magnetic field which confirm that they carry a certain charge and we have already proved that they carry a positive charge okay now the fifth property is that the charge to mass ratio of the particles depend on the gas in the discharge tube which means that simply i want you all to keep a simple thing in mind this anode rays this anode rays okay they depend on the gas taken in this tube if you have fluorine gas the anode rays will be different if you have chlorine gas the anode rays will be different if you have hydrogen gas they will be different okay so they completely depend on the gas present in this tube don't worry what is this charge to mass ratio you will understand it ahead don't worry i am going to explain you all everything okay now we have got to know what are anode rays so after knowing what are anode rays scientists wanted to know what are these anode rays actually made up of like the cathode rays are made up of electrons so what is the smallest particle present in the anode rays this is what scientists wanted to know after the discovery of anode rays attempts were made to find what is the smallest positive particle these anode rays are positively charged and they wanted to know what is the smallest positive particle present in these anode rays so for that anode rays were produced by different gases were analyzed as i have told you earlier that for different gases there will be different anode rays so the anode rays which were produced by different multiple gases they took several gases and they analyzed it all and after several experiments it was confirmed that we will be taking hydrogen gas in this tube now why hydrogen gas because see now guys pay attention we have hydrogen gas in this tube now since there is a hydrogen gas in this tube there will be anode rays produced due to this hydrogen gas as i have told earlier that anode rays completely depend on the gas present we have hydrogen gas so anode rays will be present using hydrogen gas now these anode rays are made up of small small particles so the charge of particles of anode rays divided by the mass of particles of anode rays this ratio was found to be minimum when we take hydrogen gas as compared to other gas when we take hydrogen gas the ratio this ratio of charge of particles of anode rays divided by mass of particles of anode rays was found to be minimum and if you want to find out which is the smallest particle you need to have this ratio to be minimum therefore we have taken hydrogen gas in this tube now after hydro taking hydrogen gas further on what happens what is the use of taking hydrogen gas see we all know that this cathode rays will be emitted by the cathode okay now you have this hydrogen atoms present in this tube so what is going to happen is that there will be a collision between these cathode rays and the hydrogen atoms present okay they they will collide with each other cathode rays will collide with the hydrogen atoms now due to this what happens is that see this is our hydrogen atom which has a electron in the outermost shell only one electron is present in the hydrogen okay this one electron is present in the outermost shell so due to this collision what is going to happen is that this electron will be ejected from the atom what is the meaning of ejected that it will be removed from the atom so therefore now see this is our hydrogen atom this hydrogen atom will give away one electron since it is giving away one electron that is an electron is ejected from that hydrogen atom so this hydrogen atom will now become h plus 
एच प्लस इज नथिंग बट वन आई है रिटर्न वन प्लस ओर इयर बिकॉज ओनली वन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिजेक्टेड बाय वन हाइड्रोजन एटम इफ देर वुड हैव बीन टू इलेक्ट्रॉन सो देर फोर आई वुड हैव रिटर्न टू प्लस ओर इयर दिस इज द पॉइंट दैट देर फोर द गैस मॉलिक्यूल्स टर्न इन टू पॉजिटिव आय दैट इज द हाइड्रोजन गैस मॉलिक्यूल्स टर्न इन टू पॉजिटिव हाइड्रोजन आय नाउ सी वॉट एपन्स इज दैट आफ्टर दिस हाइड्रोजन एटम्स टर्न इन टू पॉजिटिव हाइड्रोजन एटम्स आफ्टर टर्निंग इन टू पॉजिटिव हाइड्रोजन एटम्स दे फॉर्म कम टुगेदर मेनी हाइड्रोजन एट आय कम टुगेदर एंड दे फॉर्म अ एनोड रेज सो इफ मेनी सच एच प्लस आय आर कमिंग टुगेदर एंड दे आर फॉर्मिंग एनोड रेज so can you all tell me which is the smallest particle of anode rays the smallest particle of anode rays is nothing but h plus because many such h plus are coming together and forming a anode rays like if you are wa- want to a certain object a certain object is formed by many many small small atoms similarly this anode rays is formed by many h plus atoms h plus ions am i right so what is the smallest particle of this anode rays smallest particle of this anode rays is nothing but a h plus ion and what scientists said to us that the smallest particle of anode rays is called as proton what they said the smallest particle of anode rays is called as protons so now what is the smallest particle of this anode rays h plus so can i call that h plus is a proton am i right what scientists said the smallest particle of anode rays is called as protons so can i say that since h plus is the smallest particle so h plus is the proton and i can prove you all that i am right by saying h plus is the proton how see as we all know that hydrogen has only one proton and one electron okay and it does not have a neutron so if i eject the electron the electron is ejected and this hydrogen atom has now become h plus so if electron is ejected what you are left with you are left with only a proton so can i comment that h plus is nothing but a proton so this is how actually the discovery of the smallest particle of anode rays took place which is nothing but known as your protons okay so i have just written this equation in a correct form as that we all know that hydrogen is a gas okay since hydrogen is a gas all gases are present in a state what is diatomic state that is H two Cl two, that is they will always be present in the group of two. They will never be present in the monoatomic state. That is single H will never be present. Single chlorine will never be present. Therefore, I have written here H two. This is the simpler. I have used this equation to help you all understand in a better way. So, if this H two molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms, so these two hydrogen atoms are going to turn into two hydrogen ions, and it will eject. two electrons that is two electrons will be ejected by the cathode rays after the collision so like like this way many h plus ions will come together and form a anode rays so thanks to goldstein for such a wonderful discovery now after sir goldstein there came sir j j thomson who discovered electrons he studied the nature of protons that is he found out certain properties you can't say properties but certain you know yeah properties only about protons that the mass of proton is 1.672 into 10 raised to minus 24 grams okay second thing was that the proton has a mass of 1.00727 amu now if you all don't know what is amu i have made a video on this also this amu is the link is given in the description box the full form of this amu is nothing but atomic mass unit <coughs> it is nothing but a unit to measure weight which i have explained everything in that video you can watch that video okay 
the third point is that the magnitude of electric charge of proton is same as electron as we all know that what is the electric charge of an electron electric charge of an electron is nothing but minus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs similarly the magnitude of electric charge of proton is same as electron only there is a difference in sign that instead of minus we are having plus over here so guys do check out my channel where i have uploaded 11th and 12th standard physics and chemistry videos it will be helpful for you all so guys thanks for watching this video if you have liked this video please do not forget to subscribe to the channel do comment below and do share this video with your friends okay guys thanks for watching this video